Konami have descended from their lofty position atop their throne of mobile games and pachinko balls to reconfirm their dedication to creating new console and PC games. Is this an encouraging statement that long-suffering fans are going to have new franchise installments to look forward to? Is it that, or... Is it just a scramble to unburn a few bridges in the wake of a new anti-addiction law enacted in Japan that targets, amongst other things, pachinko parlors? I wonder. And welcome back to another industry report. This time we're taking a look at a new direction for Konami, whose long-term plans must, well, by now be more of a spaghetti plate than a roadmap. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, Konami's European president, Masami Sato, confirmed that the company still views console and PC gaming as being an important space, and that they're currently working on unannounced projects based on well-known IP. Although that said, he did state that the company currently has nothing to announce in regards to their really big IPs like Metal Gear and Silent Hill. And while Konami remains a well-known name in the industry, things have been incredibly quiet for them on the console front in recent years. Aside from the annual Pro Evolution Soccer releases, their only real contributions to this generation of consoles have been, what, Metal Gear Solid 5, Metal Gear Survive, Super Bomberman R, and uh, the Switch exclusive outing for Yu-Gi-Oh!, which actually sold a baffling number of copies. Now, there's a number of reasons for Konami's recent pivot away from the core sphere of console PC gaming, such as, say, its highly successful forays into mobile gaming, and as we're about to cover, their, well, gambling stuff. Now, in his interview, Sato said that one of Konami's core objectives has been to get their IPs represented on as many different platforms and devices as they can, and that's a goal that they certainly have put a lot of effort into. Apparently, slot machines also counts as a platform and device. Now, Pez is a great success story for Konami in this regard. The football series, of course, has been on home console since 1995, back when it was international superstar soccer, but in 2017, they had a mobile version of the game that has since got 200 million downloads. Then over with Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, Duel Links, that's another hugely popular mobile title in their arsenal, and it's one which has uh, been highlighted by them as a particular focus uh, that the company has as they're actually endeavoring to move into esports. Yep, in current year, you can't mention game industry financials without esports rearing its head. So, Konami is currently in the process of integrating an esports studio into their headquarters in Tokyo's uh, fashionable Ginza district. Now, this facility, once completed, will house an actual esports arena alongside a shop for hardware and other products and a sort of college where staff can educate future esports stars. Yeah, that for Pez and Yu-Gi-Oh! As if it wasn't enough of a signal of intent from Konami as where its future um, sort of lies, they also announced just a few months ago that Pro Evolution Soccer is going to be rebranded re to, get this, eFootball Pez 2020. eFootball, eSports. That's really what they're doing. Modern Konami really is about money, though. And, I mean, of course, is that necessarily a bad thing? Honestly, just about every company is, well, you know, they're, they're a business. They're into business to earn money. Now, 2019 marked Konami's fifth consecutive year of growth, and while the success of the previously mentioned mobile games can amount for a portion of that to a portion of that, the rest most definitely comes from its amusements division. This is a relatively new asset that Konami has that is, well, seemingly more reliably bankable than Hideo Kojima. While the more recent profitability numbers for the division are unfortunately just not readily available to us, we do know a few things about just how much money the gambling machines are bringing in for Konami's. So the amusements division was launched in August 2016, and it introduced us to all the lovely things like the Silent Hill-themed slot machine, and in their financial report published at the beginning of 2017, they reported an operating profit of 29.6 billion yen. That's about 278.5 million US dollars, and that's for the nine months ending December 20. Now, this rise in earnings, representing a 70% year-on-year increase for Konami, shows the earnings potential of this amusement division. Also, while the financial report accounted for that whole nine-month period, it's entirely possible that the majority of Konami's profit increase happened between the August and December when the amusement division actually existed. So, the question is then, with all these irons in the fire, why have Konami decided that now is the time to reaffirm their support of console games? Well, that's a very good question, and in order to provide the answer to that, we've got to take a look at what's happening in Japan regarding their gambling laws. 
So in August 2018, the Japanese government enacted the Basic Act on Countermeasures for Gambling Addiction. The act represented an acknowledgement on the part of Japanese lawmakers that gambling has become quite a serious societal issue in Japan, and they've introduced a number of new guidelines aimed at curtailing the wide-reaching effects of gambling addiction. So Article 2 of this act defines gambling addiction as, quote, an addiction involving the placing of bets on public races, participation in pachinko, and other acts which carry the risk of arousing a passion for gambling for the acquisition or loss of economic benefits that are carried out in accordance with law. Now, this is actually very notable. This is very, very important. What's particularly of note here is that the definition encompasses pachinko. They actually reference it. Previously, pachinko had kind of just been a loophole where you play pachinko, you'd win the balls, you then get uh, prizes with the balls, and then you'd sell the prizes at basically a, a kind of a pawn shop across the road, or sometimes even in the same building. But the thing that really matters here is that this covers pachinko. It covers what previously was a bit of a loophole, a loophole the likes of Konami made a lot of money off. Now, the act provides for a number of means by which the Japanese government hopes to curtail gambling addiction, but uh, here are the most relevant ones for our purposes, as well as Konami's. Now, the Act proposes that restrictions be put in place to prevent bets being placed on multiple games or races, as well as reducing the value of the bets generally. It also offers guidelines for preventing the entry of known gambling addicts at either the request of their families or discretion of establishments. And crucially, and I guess maybe a bit more controversially or bizarrely, it extends the responsibility of addressing gambling addiction to more than just the government and actually beyond people who own gambling businesses. Beyond the national and local governments, the Act actually also places a bit of responsibility on ordinary citizens, doctors, and those participating in business activities that are related to the gambling industry. A further decision made by the Japanese government in March of this year also is stipulating that ATMs, or, well, recommending that ATMs be removed from pachinko parlors. This is in an effort to prevent players from basically losing and then rushing to the, to the ATM to get more money, quote, before they cool off. So they're clearly very aware of what's going on here. Now, currently, 10% of all pachinko parlors in Japan, some 1,100 establishments, have ATMs installed on the premises. So you might be wondering, how does this impact Konami? Well, this is where the whole story here, the whole video ties together. Simply put, Konami are sensing danger with this, and they're panicking. Now, as it stands, the Basic Act on Countermeasures for Gambling Addiction contains a loose collection of guidelines, which are more just suggestions of best practice, rather than being legally binding things. However, that said, the Japanese government government do wish to transform the country's current gambling culture to something that in their eyes is more healthy and more easily regulated. In July of 2018, a few months before the introduction of the Countermeasures Act, the Japanese government passed what is commonly known as the Casino Implementation Act. Now, this act legalized gambling to be owned by private entities in Japan. Full rollout of this is expected to happen by 2020, and it's primarily intended to attract tourism and boost the economies associated with casinos. So, you know, think Vegas, that kind of thing. There are also strict guidelines in place, though, for um, just factors relating to them, such as the size of casinos, entry fees, where casinos can be built. Now, given the Japanese government's evident long-term goal of creating a much more healthy, uh, you know, regulated and controllable gambling culture that they can actually, well, you know, make money off through tourism and the like, uh, given how that's a goal, it's very possible that those guidelines from the Countermeasures Act will become much more formally binding. I think it's pretty clear that Konami know this. They know that, well, if the regulatory screws are tightened on one of their most profitable enterprises, well, their cash flow would take a serious hit. If the pachinko business shrivels, then Konami, well, they've got to rely on their mobile games. And sure, their mobile games have been doing really quite well, but, you know, those mobile games are always on a bit of a knife edge, awaiting the next big mobile trend. They could, you know, they could go pretty badly at a moment's notice. It's a very competitive market. So it's pretty clear that in light of this, we're seeing them say new things. Konami's dedication to pursuing esports also means that, well, Lord knows how much money they're committing to the creation of the new Ginza venture. That's, uh, well, that's pretty significant. And a reduction in their earnings while they're doing that, that might hurt their esports ambitions. So that's also a big risk factor for them. Overall, basically, Konami have came crawling back, or at least they've nonchalantly slided into the room, and they're hoping that people won't immediately ask them to leave. Now, to say that Konami have alienated their player base over the last few years, 
That would be an understatement. For a company to pursue profit, that's one thing. That's fine. That's what they should be doing, because normally when producing profit, they're providing goods and services and, you know, growth. But Konami, well, they were short-sighted. They burned bridges in that ruthlessness. Konami's pivot towards gambling games saw the much-anticipated collaboration between Guillermo del Toro and Silent Hill be slung in the bin. And then, of course, Hideo Kojima. They seemingly treated him terribly, had a whole bunch of problems, and he ended up, of course, leaving and, uh, well, creating Death Stranding. The subsequent emergence of the Silent Hill and Metal Gear themed pachinko machines, well, that was galling to fans at best, and at worst, was rubbing salt into a wound that had already been thoroughly salted. Of course, it's possible that they could win back hearts and minds, yes, but I think it's very unlikely indeed, especially because it's Konami. Based on how they act, it's hard to trust they'll do any of that well. On one hand, yes, they do have the experience and the IP to bring their players back, but on the other hand, and, well, they recently used that experience and that intellectual property to make Metal Gear survive. So, you know, hard to have a lot of faith in them. Anyway, there you go. That is an overview of Konami. They've recently sort of tried to get back into the console space. At least they've been, they've been saying that. But given everything they've done in the past, given the very obvious situation with the Japanese gambling regulations, I mean, I think we can kind of all see what they're doing there. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little look into Konami. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. And with that, I will see you next time.